If you're watching this video, it's because you're probably like me. I couldn't find a video anywhere that tells me how to change a clutch on a Gleaner Combine. Um, it's almost impossible to get the clutch housing out of there because the later models, there's not enough room unless you do something special to them, and that's either remove the transmission or jack the thing up in the air. We've had several combines in the past. Uh, C's, E's, we have two F's right now, and there's one here that has a gasoline engine on it, and we have all our toys put away for the winter here, but there's another one way in the back, back here, if you can see it back there. That's got an Alice Chalmers diesel engine in it. That's an F also. Um, they're not F2s, they're Fs. The problem with the combines is that they're just a little bit hard to work on. This is another one that we just picked up. And this combine here, it was at the right price, and we went to look at it, but it's got some problems with it. Uh, farmers are a little funny sometimes. Um, some of them fix things right, and the other ones use hammers and duct tape. And just to show you a couple things here, if you can see the patch job on this, the bottom of the bin's rusted out right here, and they got some plate they put on it. Up on the top, this elevator that goes up to the top up here, the guy told me that he fixed it with duct tape, where the, uh, the, uh, the chain meets the auger, there's a hole up there, so all the grain's falling out, so he duct taped it. Okay, so we're not going to get into why people do things, but you will know that when you're working on a clutch, there's a couple of different ways you got to do it. You either remove the transmission, which is held in by four, maybe three quarter inch bolts and two, three quarter inch. And then good luck uh, if you've got a nice hard surface to work on, you're okay. But if you're out in the middle of nowhere or in a, a cold winter shed with dirt floor, you got to figure out how to get the thing back up in there. And they weigh several hundred pounds. So what we did, um, I went and called a place that had some used parts because the problem with this clutch in, even though this guy told me that he changed it last year, he did not put a spring in that holds the throw out bearing to the clutch shifting fork and consequently the bearing turned sideways and went in and ate part of the clutch, the uh, shifting fork fingers off. And when we got it, we knew that it didn't engage right. I just thought maybe since he adjusted it, he didn't change the linkage. So I went in and I took all this linkage loose up here, took it off, re-welded it, fixed it up. And this thing right here, this is the pivot point down here, it was ready to fall off. I thought that was the whole problem. So I fixed all that. And once I got it together, I went in, pushed the clutch in, started up. Man, it worked great. Probably tried again the second time, and guess what? The clutch is stuck the whole way down. What did I do wrong? So I crawled underneath here, and I forgot there was an inspection plate down there because we used to sell AC a long time ago, and I've had E-combines apart, and that stuff will come right out of there, if I remember right, on an E-combine, but not on EFs. So I took the inspection plate off, and that's where I saw that the fingers were wore down on the, on the uh, bearing holder, and there's no spring. So, um, and along with that, uh, the... Uh, traction drive or the, the the clutch shaft itself that comes out in this area here that's got the variable speed pulley the shafts wore out the great big uh, spring apparatus uh and the the carrier that works off of that i'll show you that maybe here in a little bit but that thing there it's all wore out so uh we did an examination on certain things but we didn't do a very good one but like i said the price was pretty good for the for what we got it for um other than that, I mean, if you're into tearing this stuff apart, you got to disassemble everything to get that clutch out of there, uh, all this. So I'm going to stop this and do one other video, and I'll splice them together here. Okay, here's where we got laying on the floor, if I can get this to focus. There we go. All right, this shaft, that is the clutch shaft. In this area here, in the middle, 
is where this goes. And um, the clutch housing itself, which uh, I have here. I don't have the clutch on it yet, but this is all reassembled. I had to put a new shaft in there, two new bearings in it, plus I put a new bearing in this uh, thing here. Plus this is new because this was so badly wore that it just flopped around on that shaft and that shaft wore out. So, and then there's our last year's clutch he said he put in. So, I can figure out where this is. It's pretty well wore out. It's almost down to the rivets for being only one year old. And the clutch was, the throwout bearing was pushing up against this to try to disengage it. So, but we got parts laying everywhere. Uh, we have the bell housing out. And these were wore right in here. This is the spring that was not on. You cannot operate that without a spring. It just comes apart. So um, I found this used because this is impossible to find, the spring. There's, they don't make new ones anymore. You can't get them. I've, there was a guy that had a bone yard somewhere out in Indiana or Illinois. And I got this piece off of him. And I got one or two. Well, he got me a second spring, but it's a little bit different. Plus, I got uh, a new throw-out bearing carrier. But our throw-out bearing carrier is good, so I don't. I just keep it for a spare for one of the other combines. So anyway, we're back to the point now where uh, I have a clutch coming because when I went to go buy parts up at the AC dealer, um, I didn't look at that because it was new last year and it's uh, crap. And I just got a new pressure plate also. So let me get back out here for a second. And I'll show you what we did outside. All right, back out here. Once you disassemble all your belts and everything in here, the options, like I said before, is to remove the transmission. And you know what? If you got the facilities that you can work on it, that's fine. But out here in the middle of a shed where you don't have the stuff, no air, nothing out here, we decided to do it this way. And, and when I called the people about the parts, they, I asked one of the mechanics, I said, you guys ever fix these? He said, it's been a long time. He says, yeah. He says, I'll tell you what we do. He says, we disconnect this right here. He says, with six bolts, you can have this thing jacked up in the air and have it tore apart. And I'm thinking, well, it takes six bolts to take the transmission out, but that thing weighs several hundred pounds. So what we did, we took out these four bolts that mount this in, plus we had to remove the tire because you can't get the clutch shaft out past these big tires. That's a 23, whatever it is, 23 something. And then we took off the platform supports right here. There's two platform supports that come down right here. Once those six bolts were out, we put the jack right here, right underneath that support, jack that thing up uh, three, four inches, disassembled the stuff, everything came right out. So is it easier? I don't know. I don't feel like uh, playing around with a 700 pound transmission, wherever that thing weighs, trying to get it lined up with six bolts. So all we are doing now is we're to the point now, and you can't buy that gasket that is on there. Uh, the gasket is listed now as silicone, which is okay. So we'll put silicone in there. We drained that transmission to get the oil out of it. So we're getting to the point where we're ready to put the bell housing and stuff back on. But this is what I would probably recommend unless you're working on an E, and like I say, I think on an E, if I remember right, you could take that clutch shaft out of there. But you get into the bigger combines, there's no room. There's just no room to do it. I don't know why AC didn't uh, make this a bolt-on unit right here, this triangle thing. They could have maybe made some sort of a bolt-on unit so you could take that out, but they didn't do that. Um, other than that, uh, combine's good. Oh, man, there's our gasket laying there. It's all cracked apart. My brother took it off. He said, just take it off. So we're getting ready to put it back together. But once you get to this point, it's all downhill from here, hopefully. And, um, you know, do what you want to. Uh, and I could not find a video where anybody did this on the Internet. So uh, see what you think. And good luck. Because we're ready to, as soon as I get the clutch, we'll be putting the clutch and stuff back in. But the bow housing is in today. Oh, a couple more things. The um, 
straw walkers. I have no idea what happened back here. This is all this one's all bent up here. But these things were so badly beat up, it looked like they took a couple cement blocks and just laid them back here and just had this thing just beat the shit out of itself. So, and that chain that carries everything back was in backwards. We took that and reversed that. That took some time there. Of course, it was it was long, so we had to replace, change some links, take some links out. And we just turned around. Instead of pulling, pushing the corn or pushing the grain back, it was pulling the grain back. So we turned it the other direction. And I don't know if there's anything else or not, but oh, these things here, I just fixed this on the corn combine in the back back there. This, they all leak. And it's pretty easy to get in here and change the valves on these, in on these rods right here. But that one back there, I changed them and it still leaked. And guess what? I changed this one and it still leaks too, but I hope I don't have the same problem because what happened on that one is that there's three bolts that go through here. One, two, and three from the inside. This whole body is held in place with two bolts. The three bolts hold the body together. The two bolts hold the valve to that plate of steel. And what has happened somewhere in that very first valve in there, it cracked something inside the valve. And where the three bolts are, there's oil bleeding into that third bolt and leaking out. So no matter what I did to it, I couldn't get it fixed because it has an internal crack. And I changed all the seals on this one, but we tore it apart right after that. So there's something going on with this valve because I still have oil underneath this one. So I hope, it, I can't believe it's the same thing. So uh, hopefully you don't run into that either. But there's just some notes for you. you know, if you guys are fixing stuff up, um, it just takes time. And if you're going to use a hammer, I have, well, I kid around, I have calibrated hammers for my work. But I just jokingly say that because if you're going to do it, you do it right. And don't do it again. So uh, and don't use duct tape. My God, don't use duct tape. So, but... That's how you do it. And you see we have it supported here. We'll be crawling underneath it again here today. And hopefully we'll get to the, get to the point. And we're going to put a new traction drive belt on it too while we're at it. So um, good luck. Have fun. And watch out for pinched fingers. Okay. Have a good day.